Okay, here's game four. Just fill up the night and let's just get some activity towards the king. Okay, he's given up the knight. Well, I'm taking the knight. Um, let's keep it simple. I know the gauge bar and stuff will probably show. Well, you shouldn't be taking that, but simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. In those terms, there, it's not queenside castling anymore now because the rooks had to move. Not that they were planning to, but it's made them do a move that they didn't necessarily want to make. So the smallest of tempi, I'm hoping, allows us to try and improve our position a little bit. And going to just attack the bishop as we do. And castle. Okay, so the knight's out, just going to attack this uh, centre pawn. This knight's looking to sit comfortably here, once this pawn captures. Okay, so he's going for sort of little touch onto, could push here to move the bishop out of the way. But I don't really like doing like a long chain of pawns because the head of the snake just disappears eventually anyway. Capturing here probably brings his knight into the game. So in the mantra, it's basically <coughs> removing pieces from the ball strategically. And um, we do like to work around the centre and we do like to obliterate the centre as well. <clears throat> Pushing here locks it down a little bit so the bishop moves excuse me, moves back a bit. So it takes it away from any potential threat position there, but then it's just gonna get challenged here and then we're playing stonewall type um stuff. <clears throat> but maybe <coughs> excuse me, maybe we have to play stonewall against this player. This appears more of a managing thing and takes away the sting because if he does take, the knight will take, so he has to move his bishop back. So we're making them do something they didn't want to do. Whereas if we take here with the mindset that we're in at the minute, we're wanting to really see if we can get an advantage in this game as part of the tournament. <clears throat> should we be a little bit more steady I'm actually going to go for the one that makes me feel that it's making the opponent do something they didn't want to do with capturing he's got so many variables capturing with this pawn, capturing with this pawn, capturing with the knight I'm giving them so many choices to make whereas with this one He's only got one choice to make. Does he want to give his bishop up or not? And I'm only comfortable because I'm, I can go for the lockdown here with the pawns. But who wins out in that aspect there? Well, my pawns are more highly advanced up the board, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, when I first started playing chess, this is the type of chess I played locking stuff down just advancing the pawns up the board and then trying to take advantage of the minute smallest of pawn breaks it got a bit annoying towards the end because it was like well i ended up being a pawn down majority of the time but i know now 
why I was a pawn down because the head of the snake was always challenged and then the base of the snake was challenged so then I was left with no pawns or one pawn down because of the bad position so I'm hoping that the experience that we've gained from playing all of these games we don't fall foul of being down the pawn in a bad position I'm okay being down a pawn in a good position like everyone else would be so I hope that explains why we've made this particular move here it's not saying that it's a winning thing it's just it feels like it's suffocating them so they have to make a decision as to what they want to do I'm in tournament I'm in real tournament mode mindset you can tell can't you and it's not about being risk averse getting uh, uh, in that sense it's really genuinely looking at really what is the crucial move what is the better move um, in the first game that we played in this similar this tournament thing um, we just kind of opened up a little bit too much and we didn't really look on the back end we didn't really check what the opponent could actually do to us and so they had some nice manoeuvres with the rooks coming towards our king and the placement of their bishops was on point in terms of um, jamming up my king so we would have lost that game so we, we just resigned it so it's always bearing in mind what the opponent is actually or can they do to you uh, in that game I don't think I played it the best uh, because I didn't take advantage of any advantage I had in the game it was more a case of constantly looking at blocking off what the opponent was doing and all the while they were bettering their position on the board so they've gone into a deep think and I've rambled on for a bit so we'll see what's coming from here okay so they eventually moved the bishop to this spot and I think it's just a general continuation of pushing these pawns at the minute could also develop the knight out as well so I think probably developing the knight out might be beneficial because we know this they're going to be challenging here but just in case they decide to bring the knight here maybe we've got a bit of weight I don't know it does have like a pawn fork on here and here if that happens Okay, so they've eventually moved, they've castled. Is there an option of doing this? Let's have a look at the tempo. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Knight takes. No, definitely not. So I think probably continuation with this pawn. Yeah, just keep pushing the pawn, little stone wall side. I'm waiting for this rook to move, but it's probably not going to move, and then I would take this bishop if it's still there. Just don't want it feeling like it's own in the file here. So the knight has jumped into that square. We did say it was coming into this golden square. And this pawn does have the fork on the bishop and the... But there is some sort of movement that you do, do you know, the move order. So one of them, one of the ones that is in the fork, you either take, and then if the pawn takes, then we can come here attacking the bishop or we could just go and attack the bishop but our knight is unprotected so probably taking with the bishop then the pawn takes then the knight moves attacks the bishop 
Then the bishop comes back. And does the knight have a safe space to go to? Then the knight can come here. Bishop's on it. And maybe then he pushes the pawn down. So then where does the knight go? The knight will not have any space to go to, will it? It will be trapped. So we have to be careful of that, don't we? Okay, so we could bring the rook here, we could bring the queen here. Which looks more active. Bringing the queen here. Run through this again. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Can't attack it from that side because the bishop is there. So attack the bishop. Bishop says no, don't want any of that. Push the pawn onto the bishop. Bishop goes, oh, that was a bit of a mistake, goes back. Then his rook's still going to be owning this file, isn't it? Mm. Maybe it's not going to play out like that anyway. Let's just take simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. There's a strategy there. We know the ups and downs of it now. We've gone through it. We're really concerned about the rook owning the file, but maybe we don't need to lose too much sleep over that. And yes, we'll be opening up space around our king, pushing the pawn up. Let's go here. And they don't have to make those moves, they could just leave it there. And then if we do take, he still opens up his rook. We didn't really want that, but hey, that's the type of position we like. You know, we like to have the rook, the pawn opened up here. And so we understand the methodology behind that. Yep, so he's moved. So I'm going to attack like we said. And then they go, oh, no, sorry, I don't, I didn't mean that. Or oh, they go, right, well, we'll attack you then as well. Yeah, okay, so he's gone with the ooh, ah. Does it look any different? Can't squeeze in there. So, yeah, let's just take... And that's not what we'd have wanted, but I suppose we can maybe push here. In fact, the knight's on the pawn anyway, isn't it? So we take the pawn first. See, this is with the tunnel vision looking, and then there's this piece that... Oh, steady on, steady. No, don't do anything yet. Getting carried away. <clears throat> oh, he's captured with the different pawn. He's not opened up the rook. Okay, so we take. This queen's not squeezing down somewhere, getting my. Let's take this pawn. Oh, he definitely would have thought that was coming. But as usual, there's nothing concrete. We've got the same amount of pieces. We're just plus one at the moment. But positionally, we need to really look to... Our pawns are highly advanced at the board. Like I said, though, the head of the snake, it can fall just like that. Obviously, Queen's trying to look here. Maybe we'll push here first, get more pawns elevated up. Problem with advancing your pawns is you then have to support them, you know, with your major, major and minor pieces, which is a little bit soul destroying. Okay, so it's uh, 
Do we want to triangulate? Or do we want to push through? Pushes down. Oh dear, that just goes a bit scary, isn't it? So we push up, then he pushes, then we push, takes, takes, open up our king area. I'm trying to make space around his king though, aren't I as well? Get the queen up first. Square bishop just looking to come here. Ooh, look. Well, imagine, oh, sorry, getting carried away. Yeah, I thought that was a queen <laughs> bishop there attacking this square. Right. Problem we've got is I mean, if he goes here, gets his king here, then he gets his rook there, then that's a big problem because he's got his queen directly on that line. So I'm thinking if we push this, then if he does do that, the knight can't come here then, can it? So I was thinking then going there and taking the pawn, but that's not going to work. My queen is not doing anything, so I think I need to bring the queen here. No, hold on, do I? Do I? My concern is the pawn, so if I bring the king up, I bring the king up, so if he's going to be doing all the fancy business of getting his king across and here targeting, then at least we can get support on that pawn and then start pushing up. Yeah, that was the danger spot that I saw. It's very, very clever, you know, fighting from the back, looking like you're not doing anything, but realistically, look at that, look at that line. Whew. How could he not be going for that? Wow. Very good, very good. This is the things that I do over on playing it over the board. Um, if the player doesn't play the move, then it's I overestimate their their abilities. Um, I look at them and go, well, that is possible. You know, it is possible to do. So then I start making movements to prevent that type of stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes. I go over the board I think and then I lose out on any advantage that I could have actually put in place myself that's the thing that is the I think that's the latest thing that I've spotted from my evaluation as you can see throughout the mantra and um, all of the mantra is based on my experiences as I've been going through playing chess and there's always something to learn always something when I think oh yes I've got it nailed on then there's something else to actually just work on now i think that's why i love chess because there's always something to pick up on all the time and when i'd finished actually laminating the um my mantra i went do you know what i bet you there's underlying concepts under those concepts that you've created and so it is but it's been able to choose it at the right moment that's the that's the real challenge it's choosing those right concepts at the right time and as usual when i'm talking it sounds like oh yes he's got it all sewn up i'll keep on reiterating i haven't got it sewn up i'm practicing my concept of the mantra with chess and it helps me to develop as i'm going forward and hopefully come out with some magical moves myself and just to take away and learn from but constantly always learning even now while I'm talking I'm looking at what other potential positions is this person going to do are they going to eventually attack the head of the snake 
what's their position going to look like when they do attack the head of the snake I feel that I've got it covered in terms of being able to manage the responses to any attacks on the head of the snake the only concern I have is really about this stealth attack coming through here once his king moves out of the way and does his magic so once those moves are taking place my brain now is thinking well okay well if he does push the pawn down there what can I do next I really wanted my knight to go here realistically that isn't happening because the pawn is there and it's blocking it's managing this square these squares so what else can I do to deter that there is options of here but I lose a pawn you know because the bishop takes and then the pawn takes queen takes he's still got that diagonal so what have, you, what have I achieved doing that is there are elements of bringing the knight back around again so they've not actually gone for the pawn push down so it's like they don't know about it or they they've gone opposite our queen so in essence if they push the pawn then we can't take back because well we can but we'd lose the queen does this give me the chance to bring my queen here then or can we now push this pawn up like we wanted to if he does push that down then we can take it here so I'm looking tunnel vision obviously there he might have done that as a diversion maybe he still pushes maybe here we take sorry we take maybe he takes back this way because we don't know it takes that way mm. pushing here blocks off the queen's diagonal again this is me worrying about something that maybe the opponent hasn't even seen so can I really I bring my queen here looking to come here but I don't have anything else supporting the attack here but if we push this pawn and if we were allowed to block this pawn here then we could start pushing this pawn up I think it's all based on this pawn you know I'm going to push this pawn It's based on us attempting to get up here, getting to go here. It's all a bit stonewallish, isn't it? Using the pawns, like I said, using the pawns, you end up supporting them. My knight doesn't have any protection on it now, at this moment. So I can envisage a little bit of a kick here, which then allows them to. Although this bish, this pawn is blocking the diagonal at the moment. If they want to scratch and bite and think, oh, there's too much pressure coming towards my king, then they come down. We take, he takes, he's on our knight, we bring the knight across. Maybe the bishop takes, probably not. Takes here, rook's got a nice little bit of situation going here. All sorts of stuff can happen, but we don't really know what this player's going to do. The time is running down a little bit. <clears throat> as the time is running down a little bit it's a 10 second increment though so if they suddenly turn into a bullet specialist they'll be able to claw the time back maybe it's a complicated position But it does feel it. I mean, if they did a few of the things that we talked about, it would be complicated and it would drag the game out. It looks like their time is definitely going down, though. Crikey. Damn. 
I don't want to be looking this good though man you know so okay that was game four so we're now we've got three wins and uh, one loss okay this is not boarding well okay right um we should be yeah you know, well anyway this was a nice game again this was another nice game to talk through we explained everything that we we're going through locking down all that sort of stuff and uh, just want to have a look at the um that taking situation or not you know pushing onto the bishop just want to see do I keep the lines on what's the evaluation put that on there uh, yeah all right just want to see what the computer says shall we just move up a bit to push or to take right this is the question to push or to take oh it gave us an advantage of something it takes a while this gauge bar okay so it was like zero but then it went up not point something so that's better than nothing we had our explanation as to why we did that move so i'm fairly happy with that another interesting game thank you very much